Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to tell you how to connect into your Parallels Desktop's virtual machine via SSH. I noticed the other day that when I run a virtual machine in Parallels Desktop, then I would like to access it remotely from other devices, either on my network or just from my Mac, so that I can emulate what's going on remotely. And it occurred to me that I actually don't know how to do that. So I did some research and, uh, and this is how you do that. I took some notes um, and let's go through this step by step. So the first thing I assume that you have is a Parallels Desktop virtual machine already installed. So we're going to open Parallels Desktop. Here it is, and it's all very exciting. It always wants to open my uh, latest virtual machine immediately. So we don't want to start this yet. I want to go and configure it. So there's either this little button down here that takes us into the configuration options, or you can also go to the uh, Parallels Desktop menu and click on Virtual Machine Configure. And in here, there's three tabs. You go to the Hardware tab, and you hit the Network tab here. And obviously, this needs to be ticked. Otherwise, your virtual machine won't have access to your shared internet connection from your host computer. So the thing here is, if you hit Type, no matter which type you select, your virtual machine will always be able to connect to the internet. So as long as you don't want to access it from a remote computer or remote instance or your host computer, you'll be fine and you may not need this. But I want to connect via SSH, so therefore I need a separate IP address that hopefully Parallels Desktop can create for me. And it can. All we need to do is tell it how to do that. So we have three options here. The default is shared network. That really doesn't do anything other than just give your virtual machine an internet connection so you can roam freely on the web. And the second option here, these used to be much fewer options back in the day, is the bridge network. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create a separate IP address and will make this available to other devices on your network. Choose default adapter here. This is, this is your best bet. And you have a third option here, which is host-only network. These options, uh, the bridge network and the host-only network, they are almost identical. The only difference is that host-only network means only your Mac will be able to connect to your virtual machine, whereas when you select bridge network, then other devices on your network will be able to access your virtual machine as well. So I want to do that. I'm going to go and create the, I'm going to tick the default adapter. And we can just go and close this. And then we hit the big start button. So now my CentOS instance is starting up here. As soon as this has started up, I can log in and find out what my IP address is or what the IP address of that virtual machine is. And the easiest way to do that is to use the if config utility. And that'll give us very cryptic output. Uh, but the important part that I can see here is the second line of the ETH0 adapter. And that's I add address 100131. So this is the thing that is assigned by my router. So this will be different in your case. With this IP address, I'll be able to log in. But there's one other thing that we need to check, and I've outlined this in my article, and that is you must make sure that the, if in this case a Linux instance, actually allows you to log in as root from a remote computer, from a remote device. And you must also make sure that it allows you to connect with a password, because otherwise you'll have to use a key file and it's all going to get complicated, and especially for testing, uh, just uh, root access with password will be fine. In my case, that is already set up, but I can show you how to do it and so that you can just double check that in your case. Consult my article. It says you're supposed to edit the file at ssh sshd underscore config. Now there are quite a few ssh variations here in that folder, so make sure you grab the right one. at ssh sshd underscore config. So here goes. You just look for those two lines and if you were like this one, a permit root login that may be commented out. So you just press A to edit this. And in my case, what it used to look like, I guess, was 
something with the uh, with the hash in the front. So just uh, make sure those those hashes are gone. Permit root locking and password authentication. Once you've done that, if you had to make any changes, you just get out of this and restart the SSH daemon. So that's uh, on centers. That's service sshd restart. If you didn't make any changes, or if you didn't have to make any changes, don't worry about this. And that's all we need to do here on our instance. As long as we remember our IP address, we can now go to a Mac terminal window and log in. And if you don't remember it, if config is there to the rescue. So let's try this. Asks me for the password. And that's perfect. I'm in. I hope you found this useful. If you liked it, then don't forget to check out my website for other funky tips and tricks and share the article with people you know who may find this useful. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for other funky screencasts. Bye for now.